The First World War is most remembered for the awful carnage of an industrial type of warfare not previously experienced. Our war memorials bear testimony to the young men who gave their lives in a conflict they could have scarcely imagined when it started in 1914. But in the darkness of that war, there were glimmers of light, expressions of humanity that stood out in stark, almost bizarre contrast to the awfulness of the explosions, the death, the mud, and the horrors of a war that people scarcely imagined might happen when it started in 1914. By Christmas 1914, with the death toll rising, Bodies had been laying in no man's land for some time because each side was unable to retrieve them and give them a proper burial. The Red Cross proposed a Christmas truce where both sides would lay down their arms for Christmas in order that they may safely retrieve their fallen comrades. After all, it was supposed to be a time of peace on earth, goodwill to all men. The truce was never sanctioned by the top brass, but it was observed by both sides on many parts of the Western Front and it was down to local officers and their men as to whether they would observe a truce. Up to 100,000 troops laid down their arms as the guns fell silent. In fact, so silent it was on Christmas Eve that the troops in opposing trenches both sang to and sang with their enemies. Silent Night was amongst those sang, as it was well known by both sides. Rather than just emerging from the trenches to find and bury the dead, Soldiers started to socialise with one another in no man's land. It was spontaneous rather than organised. Enemies exchanged cigarettes, souvenirs and gifts. There were impromptu Christmas carol services. Then out came the footballs, and men who had been firing on one another the day previous had a kickabout. In some places they played actual games. It was a remarkable and bizarre scene and recorded in letters and photographs by soldiers, and then reported in the newspapers back home. The top brass were so concerned about morale that they banned fraternisation in later truces and limited the scale to just retrieval of bodies, as well as introducing censorship for troops and press. Truces after 1914 were often short-lived, but at times when the front was very quiet, truces would be arranged, and men would meet up. In many ways it seems bizarre that enemies would take time out of battle to stop for a truce and bury their dead, have a drink, exchange memorabilia and just chat. But it still characterises many conflicts today. Somehow even war can't totally destroy the desire of human beings to recognise their common humanity. Sadly there's something about truce that's also true and that is Every truce is always negotiated, so it has an end. And at Christmas 1914, men who were fraternising on Christmas Day went back to shooting one another and killing one another the following day. Christmas is always associated with peace. The hillside on which the shepherds kept their sheep was the darkest of places. But that dark place was lit up with the angels who sang glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. But the song the angels sang was not about world peace. In fact, the son of God himself was born into a, a torn world, a divided world, torn by exactly the same evils and sins as tears the world apart today. We often associate Christmas with peace and goodwill toward men. That's why they tried to get a Christmas truce in 1914. It's why people strive for peace today. But actually the angels weren't referring to peace between people at all. The real message of Christmas is that in the birth of Jesus, God wanted to bring peace between himself and a world that didn't recognize him or who had rejected him. And how did that happen? By Jesus dying on the cross in order that God may be able to offer each man and woman the opportunity of peace with him of forgiveness and of knowing him in life and in eternity and all we have to do is accept and follow Jesus and unlike a truce following Jesus is something that isn't for a short time it's permanent actually the words the angels sang are much better translated in a different way 
So rather than glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to all men, it should be more accurately translated glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Today God desires to rest his favour on you and to bring his peace into your life. He desires the same for every man and every woman. But whether that happens or not doesn't depend on him. It depends on you. It depends on your willingness to accept him, to accept his offer, his gift of peace, and to follow Jesus. Well, have a very Merry Christmas, and may God bless you in the coming year.